So far throughout this course, we've built up a map library. And as the authors of this map library, we've known how to use it pretty easily. But we can make it a bit easier for the common everyday user. So in this lesson, we're going to take our map library and we're going to build up a jQuery UI widget for our map. So if you go to jQueryUI.com slash widget, you can check out the information on the widget factory. If we scroll down here and click view source, we can look at this example widget. And those of you who are familiar with writing jQuery plugins, writing a widget is very similar. And actually, in some ways, writing a widget is much easier. To begin a widget, you just start with dollar sign dot widget, and then you type in your namespace and then the name of the widget. You can set some default options, but then the important part is this create function right here. And you can see that they're using an underscore, which indicates that it's private. And within this create function, this is where you do all the setup for your widget. And then you can see this function right here called random, and it doesn't have an underscore. And that's because it's a public function. So we can use public and private functions to set up our jQuery widget. So in the head tag, we can see that we need jQuery and jQuery UI. So we'll copy these right here. And then within our plunker, we'll add these to the top of our script references. So we'll create a new file, and we'll call it jQueryUI.mapster.js. We'll wrap it into a self-invoking anonymous function, and we'll pass through the window in Google. And then inside of here, we'll set up our widget. So I've pasted in the custom colorized widget from the jQuery UI website. And from here, we'll go through and we'll set up our map using this as a boilerplate. So we'll set up our namespace, and you can really have your namespace be anything. It doesn't really affect too much what we're going to be doing in this lesson. So I'm going to call the namespace mapster, but then I'm also going to call the widget name mapster. So I'm going to get rid of all these options as well, because we don't have any defaults that we want to set. And then I'm going to remove the contents of all these functions. So now here we have our blank jQuery widget. The only methods that we're going to be concerned with are the create method, and any public method, such as this random method. And we'll change this random method to add marker. And rather than passing through an event, we'll pass in options to create the marker. So since we're using our mapster library, we're going to need to import that. So in our self-invoking anonymous function, we'll call mapster. And since mapster abstracts Google away from us, we can actually get rid of the Google namespace. So before we initialize our map, let's make sure that we can call our widget. So inside the create function, we're going to console.log created. Then we're going to go to the index, and we're going to add our widget. So now in our main JS, we'll go through and remove all this content. And rather than importing Mapster, we can actually import jQuery. So now we'll select the map, and we'll call dot .mapster. So now that we're calling Mapster, we'll check the console, and we can see that we get created. So now that we know we've set up our widget correctly, let's go about setting up our map. So to create a map, we need to know the element to display the map on, as well as the map options. And we can get the element by calling this.element. But except this element is the jQuery object, so to get the actual HTML element, we just need to tap into the array and call the zero index. And then to get the options, we'll just call this.options. So if actually we check out the value of this in the console, we'll see the properties on the widget. We can see the console that we have our element, and then we also have the options object as well. So now that we have the options and the element, we can create a map. And we can initialize it with the mapster library, and then we can attach that onto the widget itself. So we can set this.map, and we can set the mapster.create and pass through the element and the options. So if we go to our main script file and we pass through some options, and we can pass through the map options by calling mapster.map underscore options. And now you can see that the map appears. So using a jQuery UI widget, we were able to initialize a map. And this is something that would be a bit easier for a common user to use. So now if we go back into our jQuery UI mapster, we can set the add marker function. And we'll return this.map dot add marker, and we'll pass through the options. And we'll go into our main script file, and we'll set this result to a variable called mapster. And we'll call the mapster widget again, but this time we'll call the add marker function, and we'll pass through our properties. And right now, nothing's showing up, so we'll go to our widget, 
and we can see right here in our add marker function that the options parameter is named wrong. So once we change that, we can see that the marker is added to the map. So now that we can add a marker, we'll set up being able to find a marker. So we can call the findBy method, and we'll pass through the callback. And we'll do something similar for remove markers. So we'll go into our main script. And so now I'll go and I'll add another marker. And since we have clustering enabled, we actually see the cluster show up. So if I go into map options, I can take this cluster and I can set it to false. So we'll set the first marker's ID to 1 and the second marker's ID to 2. And now we'll call mapster. And then we'll call the find markers function within our widget. And then we'll pass through our callback that returns our marker. So now we'll log the matches to the console. And we can see that we're getting the map canvas div. So let's go back to our widget and see what's going on. And the problem is, is that we're not returning any of these markers. So now that we're returning the markers, let's check our console. So now back in the console, we can see that we're getting a marker that has an ID of 1. So we're able to find markers. Now let's check to see if we can remove markers. So just like above, we'll pass through the callback function, except this time we'll check to see if the marker has an ID of 2. And we can see that the second marker was removed from the page. So within our jQuery UI widget, we can provide all these public functions that we can tap into our Mapster library with. We can even return all the markers as well. So if we tap into this.map.markers.items, we can get all of the markers back. And that's because the markers is just a list. So we have to call into items to get the actual markers back. So if we call into the Mapster widget to get the markers, and we log that to the console, we should only see an array of one. And in the console, we get an array, and it has one item, and it has an ID of one. So in this lesson, we were able to build up a map widget using our Mapster library. So now that we have this reusable widget built up, we can tap into things such as Google Maps services. So in the next lesson, we'll add in these services, and we'll create some really cool functionality.